Here's a true story about Hetty Green. Hetty Green was an American businesswoman and a financier. She was born November 21st, 1834, and she lived till July 1916. She was known as the richest woman in America during the Gilded Age. And some of the people who knew her knew her as as the Queen of Wall Street. And that was due to her willingness and and, uh, kindness in lending money freely and at reasonable interest, reasonable interest rates to other financiers and even city governments during financial crisis. She exhibited a very, 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 very extraordinary discipline, uh, which actually enabled her to amass a large amount of fortune as a financier. And this, this was at a time when nearly all major financiers were men, you know, two, two days after her death, this is what the New York times said. This is what the New York times printed to pay tribute to Hetty Green. And I quote, It was that Mrs. Green was a woman that made her career the subject of endless curiosity. The subject of endless curiosity, comment, and astonishment. Her habits were the legacy of New England uh, ancestors who had the best of reasons for knowing the value of money, for never wasting it, and for risking it only when their shrewd minds saw an approach to certainty of profit. Though something of hardness was ascribed to her, that uh, she harmed any is not recorded, and victims of ruthlessness are usually audible. That there are few like her is not a cause of regret, that there are many less commendable is one. So basically, um, she was hailed uh, as a a great and and, and extraordinary person um, in her time. You know, she was was a highly successful investor uh, with a Wall Street office. And she was unusual to being a woman in a man's world. And the thing, one of the notable things about her was that she was unwilling to participate in New York City high society. They, their conspicuous consumption, their out lavish and outlandish spending at the time. You know, this, this was the Gilded Age, like I said before. And... Uh, during that time, there was a lot of lavish spending. It was a lot of um, irresponsible spending, and but she refused to participate in in any of that. And not only that, she chose to give to you know other financiers and and banks and even city governments to help them to save them, you know, and. And one of the notable times was in 19, the the panic of 1907, you know, where there were a lot of failing banks. And during that time, she helped bail out Wall Street. She helped bail out New York City. She helped the United States economy, you know. And, uh, but, you know, nevertheless, uh, she was still seen as, you know, in her widowhood as an odd miser. Uh, she was always all in black, and uh, sometimes she was referred to, you know, as uh, the witch of Wall Street. Um, and then even later, the Guinness Book of Records named her the greatest miser of all time, you know. Um, there were stories that uh, included her refusal to buy expensive clothes, or pay for hot water. You know, you, you know, as a very wealthy person of her class, um, 
you know, one would have expected that she would be, she would be, uh, she would rather, you know, spend just a little amount of money to pay for hot water so she could have that for her own convenience. But instead of, she wasn't, she didn't care about her convenience. <laughs> she, she cared more about not spending the money, the, the extra little money for the hot water, you know, so she would not pay for hot water. She also had a habit of wearing a single dress for a long time. You know, like she'd buy a single black dress for a long time. She would wear that dress until it was worn out. And she would refuse to buy any other dresses until that particular dress was worn out. You know, you know people saw her... Um, saw her as uh, eccentric, you know, and just, but she was just mostly out of step with the excesses of the Gilded Age, you know, she was just mostly out, mostly out, of, out of step with them because the Gilded Age, uh, there was a lot of excess, a lot of spending, lavish spending, outlandish spending, but she was, she was just not, uh, she just did not partake in any of that, and uh, mostly women, so, you know, because women, women like spending, they, they like buying, they like shopping, they like all these kinds of things, nice things. And um, being a woman, she, she's expect a certain expectation, a certain amount, uh, you know, even a small amount of expectation is that she would be at least decent looking and presentable and buy some clothes, you know, uh, spend some average amount of money on clothing and fashion. But she was just totally opposite and she was even worse than the men. But let's, let's talk about some of her background. You know, her, her real name, her full name is Henrietta Howland Robinson, you know, and, uh, you know, Hetty's Hetty's a, it's like a nickname. And um, she talked about how her, f you know, her father was a large influence on her, her frugality. Because uh, her dad was also very frugal, was quite frugal. And, uh, you know, she, ref you, you know, she, she recounts uh, an occasion where her father was, offered an expensive cigar and he, he rejected it. He rejected it and he said his response was that, and, and I quote, I smoke four cent cigars and I like them. If I were to smoke better ones, I might lose my taste for the cheap ones. And <laughs> I you know, these are the, these, these are the ones, you know, end quote. So he's saying, hey, look, I enjoy the cigars that I smoke now. They only cost me four cents. Uh, if I, if I try the ones you're offering me and I develop a taste for them, then I'll, I might want to start buying this, the new ones and what's the point? I enjoy the ones I smoke now. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're quite satisfactory to me. So, and, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, he enjoys what he, he enjoys the cigars. He's fine with them. Why does he need to pay, start paying ex extra for expensive cigars, you know, when he's fine with the way he is. So Hetty um, also reflects on her Quaker up upbringing, you know, uh, a reporter once questioned her uh, when she spent a little time at an expensive hotel. She checked in and she checked out too soon. And he questioned her uh, why she did that. And um, her response was, and I quote, young man, I am a Quaker and I'm trying to live up to the tenets of the faith. That is why I dress plainly and live quietly. No other kind of life would please me, end quote. So, um, 
she was she she had a, a Quaker upbringing, and uh, Quakers were a group uh, a group or a sect back then uh, with the early settlers uh, in America, and um, they had their they had certain tenets, they had certain lifestyle that was frugal, that was simple, and uh, she was a Quaker, and she said, you know. This is what we do, and we don't spend lavishly, and we're frugal and and simple. You know, she was she was um, known as the most stingy woman in history. You know, um, her wealth uh, at, at this time uh, is estimated at about two point three billion to five point seven billion dollars. You know, and. Um, when she was born, she was born. She was the only daughter of her, of her father, who was a very wealthy businessman, as I said. And at that time, in that year, in 1835, uh, she in well, not when she was sorry, she was born in 1835, but when her dad passed on, uh, which was about 21 years later, so so about uh, 1856. She inherited from her father a fortune estimated at seven point five million dollars. Now, uh, back in eighteen fifty-six, uh, you know, uh, the value of that compared to now is not seven point five million. You know, you're talking a very large amount that, with the value now with inflation. But that was not really all that happened. She actually. Um, when she was 21, she actually moved to live in New York uh, to invest her money in Wall Street. And she became very, she was very savvy, she became very savvy and very uh, successful in Wall Street. And to the point that even some people called her the witch of Wall Street. You know, she, she married a millionaire like herself, uh, but it's reported that she lived on leftover cakes and broken biscuits from grocery stores. You know, and um, people say, it, it, it's argued that people say that uh, she would try to get a free bone for her dog every day, a free bone to give the dog, you know, instead of buying dog food. Um, it's reported that she was a very miserable woman, uh, but um, I doubt that. My opinion, I don't think she was. You know, I, I, I think that's left to be argued. And uh, she was said to have sewn underpants that she, she, she sewed when she was 16 years old. And she would wear those underpants and did not change them or buy any others until the day of her death Un until she passed she never never changed the underpants you know of course she would wash them they would you know she had laundresses who would wash them but it's the same pair she would wear i find that hard to believe though i mean especially if she sewed them she could have sewn another one maybe she sewed two or three and she switched them around but i think i think people uh, want to be very unfair and, uh, you know, I think people want to have out outlandish claims about her, you know. They just want to be so sensational about her. Um, there's probably, there's probably, uh, there's probably some truth to her eccentricness. I mean, even the Guinness Book of Records uh, gave her the title of the most stingy woman in the world. So there's some truth to it. And even her, you know, from her own words, uh, from some of her responses to reporters, she does back up the claims that she's frugal. She's very frugal, very thrifty, you know. And, uh, so some of these things are probably some of these things are probably true.
You know, she never spent a, a penny on on uh, hot water. She never used hot water. Uh, she always wore the same black dress. She never changed it, you know, replaced it until it was completely worn out. And it's reported that she lived on eating a pie that only that costs only two cents. Eating a pie that only costs two cents. Another report was that Hetty caused caused her son to amputate his leg because when he broke it, she delayed treating it. She delayed the treatment for his leg because she insisted she would not spend money on the medical uh, attention that he needed, the medical treatment that she needed. You know, but it is... Um, it is well known that she did do a lot to try to save him, to try to help him. Yeah, because there is substantial evidence that she put up great expense and effort to treat her son. Um, this included visits to multiple specialists as well as temporarily re relocating her residence so she could care for him. So... Um, I kind of find it hard. I kind of find that a very harsh accusation, you know, that she neglected to treat her son's injured leg, which resulted in amputation. I'm not really sure, um, you know, because, you know, it was rumored, it was rumored that uh, she was, you know, she just refused to pay for even one visit to a single physician. But, it, but there is evidence that uh, suggests otherwise. So, yeah, I don't really know. But um, she was she was uh, stingy. She was frugal. She was very frugal. She was very thrifty. Um, I mean, it was reported that uh, she instructed her laundress to wash only the dirtiest parts of her dresses, which was the which was the hems, you know. The bottom part of her dress you know how they used to dress back uh, you know back in, in the old days where they would the females would wear very long dresses and then the hems the the bottoms of the dresses would drag sometimes uh, on the ground or would, would scrape the ground sometimes and um, she would instruct her um, laundress it was reported we don't know how far this is really true because uh, she never admitted it. She never admitted to it. Uh, but she was, it was reported or rumored that she would instruct her laundress to wash only the hems so that she could save money on soap. Yeah, it was also reported that uh, she died in 1916 at the age of 81. Uh, the, uh, she died because she had a stroke and the stroke was due to a quarrel she had with her maid uh, because the maid was arguing she was arguing about salary she asked for an increase in salary and due to that request you know there was a back and forth with her and the maid and she got into a she got into a uh, she she got a stroke and that stroke killed her and i wouldn't be shocked that the maid would ask for more, more money if if it's true that she was so frugal i can imagine how she, you know she would not really see much value in the work of a maid she wouldn't hold she wouldn't really respect uh, the the work or the effort put in by the maid and uh, she would consider that not worthy of a lot of money so she would probably pay very very low so I can under I, I, I can understand how that could have happened but I you know that the maid would argue with her or request an increase in salary but I'm not so sure about the you know, her having a stroke due to a quarrel with the maid. And, you know, some, some of these, some of these um, 
accusations about her just seem like uh you know this people came up with rumors or stories just because you know to take advantage of her you know her thriftiness or her frugality people people say that uh, uh when her children were grown up and uh they left home uh, green moved repeatedly among small apartments in brooklyn heights you know and then after 1898 she moved to hoboken new jersey uh and she said they, they said she moved to, to new jersey mainly to avoid new york's property tax <laughs> you know and this and, and even though she loaned money to the city at reasonable rates you know she still moved to she still moved away from new york because of property taxes you know they the they, people say that she regularly commuted to her office in the chemical bank on broadway from new jersey so from new jersey you know it, you know she actually is um reported to be by 1905 new york's largest lender so this woman this woman had money okay um but just different kind of rumors you know so many rumors flying about her flying about her you know flying around about her you know some of the unsubstantiated rumors some of them claim that she ate only oatmeal eggs and onions unheated unheated so as not to increase her increase uh her, her fuel fuel bill they didn't want to she she wouldn't want to increase her fuel bill so she wouldn't heat the the eggs and the oatmeal <laughs> you know um but um i think something that was substantiated was that in her old age she developed a hernia and uh, but she refused to, to have an operation you know and that she she would she used a stick to press down the swelling you know um you know one interesting thing though is that uh, at some point she eventually moved to her office to the national park bank uh when she thought that she had been poisoned at the chemical bank and she had a fear uh in fact she had that fear most of her life you know uh, this is what i'm this is something you know i'm about to say something now to to say this is why i don't believe you know i, I just believe a lot of these things are rumors we have another uh, reason, a rumor, why she had died. And this is a rumor that um, she developed a stroke because she was arguing with her maid over the virtues of skimmed milk, you know. So maybe the maid is saying, hey, we need milk. And she's saying, well, milk is not important, you know, and because of an argument over something so ridiculous, something that could have been bought easily, you know, uh, she developed a stroke, you know. But the New York Times did report that she suffered a series of strokes leading up to her death. The New York Times reported that. This lady, say what you want about her, but she was very charitable, and I applaud her for that. You know, like I said, you know, she saved the city. She saved many, you know, she saved city governments. She saved banks. She saved uh, uh, the United States economy. You know, there was that uh, whole, uh, um, that whole thing with the uh, panic of 1907 where banks were failing. And she saved a lot of banks and she kept them from failing, you know. This this woman, um, she she was she was she was very very charitable. At one time, she was 
she spoke you know she, she spoke about i mean and she said i quote i believe in discreet charity you know and she even had a reputation of being so caring to uh children and old neighbors you know i mean she she say what you will about her she was very very charitable and uh you know that that is one thing that i i you know i'll always say i applaud her for ever um what i disagree with her about is not spending money on herself you know not enjoying her wealth you know um if you if you have money <laughs> spend it enjoy yourself by all means save by all means don't be outlandish with your spending don't be lavish but the general comforts of life the average comforts of life don't skimp on that you know you know one needs to take care of oneself take care of yourself take care of your children take care of your family you know don't uh you know she was her her you know thing of not spending money on herself not buying dresses and all those kinds of things um they may be extreme and they may be untrue but i know that there would be some truth to some of the rumors because again she herself confirmed by herself by saying it you know and another thing is this okay look look at what happened upon her death okay her children they split the her fortune they split what she left behind and both children just spent the money like they did not do what she did they were not frugal they spent the money they enjoyed the wealth so all this money she had amassed she didn't touch she didn't spend she didn't enjoy upon her passing others enjoyed it people enjoyed it her children enjoyed it in fact her children um one of them sylvia you know she built uh a hospital a free hospital where you know with staff with doctors nurses medical equipment all of that and people would just come and get treated for free imagine all those medical bills imagine all those costs and all her money was just used to pay for all that and she had no control over it because she was dead and gone you know uh both sylvia and ned uh were said to have donated a lot of money millions to 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 colleges you know over 70 colleges churches hospitals charities they spent this money you know they spent her money you know so what is the the point you know what's the point now in the final analysis what's the point now she just suffered for nothing she suffered for nothing she didn't enjoy her wealth she didn't enjoy her accomplishments and she experienced being shunned by society being shunned shunned by her peers uh being ridiculed uh and just all this mental anguish and uh uh just psychological negative you know uh experiences that she had that she suffered from her own hands and the hands of the hands of her contemporaries the hands of her peers you know yeah well she was finally buried at the Emmanuel cemetery uh at the Emmanuel Episcopal Church in Bells Falls Vermont and she was buried next to her husband you know uh, she had converted late you know late in life to the episcopalian faith so you know that's why you know and i think that was because so she could be buried close to him or something like that i don't know um 
But yeah, man, you know, I think there's a there's a song that, like she was mentioned in a song. There was a, a song by George M. Cohen. Uh, the, uh, the song's titled "Then I Then I'd Be Satisfied with Life." She was mentioned in in that uh, in that song, and um, I think there are, there were a couple movies uh, that were based on her or based on uh, upon her life. One one was called "The She Wolf." Was uh, came out in 1931, and another one was called "You Can't Buy Everything," and that came out in 1934. And they were they were based on her, and the films were about um, a miserly billionaire businesswoman. You know, uh, I think one of them was played by the Australian actress Mae Robson. You know, so that's it for Hetty. Um, thanks for, uh, watching another video on the story planet and, uh, don't forget to subscribe.